everyone and welcome to this Digital Futures seminar uh, where we will hear Dr. Wang Wei Liu talk about stars, simultaneous transmitting and reflecting surfaces. And uh, I will not spend so much time introducing you, but uh, you have really an extraordinary CV here, a Triple fellow, a fellow other uh, organizations, Web of Science, highly cited researcher, and a distinguished lecturer of multiple IEEE societies. So we're really looking forward to, to hear you talking about this concept and this name that I also heard from you yesterday that you have uh, coined yourself. So thank you very much for coming here. OK. <clears throat> okay. Uh, first, uh, thanks for Andrew for inviting me. Thanks for your kind of introduction. Yeah. So yeah, this is the first time I come to Sweden. Yeah. But when I landed, I feel very excited. Yeah. So everywhere is very spacious. So, yeah. It's not like London. We are very like so tight. Yeah. So I really like it. So today I'm going to talk about this uh, star. Yeah. So this is uh, today's my like so outline. So first I'm going to talk about the oh sorry yeah. So the star the star basics. Right. So I talk what is star, why do we need star, and how we implement the star. Right. And then with some like the operating uh, like the oper uh, like the protocols and the joint beam forming, this kind of thing. Yeah. And then I will talk about the second part, the star's platform. Yeah. So what I want is that I want to establish a star's platform in the future to do the sensing as star, amplifying as star, and the caching as star. Yeah, it's, we can regard it as Apple's, Apple system, Apple platform, or Android's platform, and people can do uh, several things on this kind of platform. Yeah. And then I will provide several case studies of star. Yeah. And then I'll talk about our like support type, standardization, and the commercial progress of the stars. Yeah. And I will give you the, some like the research opportunity and our like open source code for the star. Yeah. Actually, I put uh, most of our like uh, codes for star like uh, in my GitHub. Yeah. Uh, because for me, I'm very like open researcher. Yeah. So I encourage every like uh, people who are interested in my research, we can like do together. Yeah. Okay, now start with this kind of uh, like we start with race. Yeah, I trust most of us uh, like uh, have uh, understand what is race. Yeah, so yeah, it's uh, like a reconfigurable intelligent surface, and uh, so it's uh, like a planner of surface that consists of massive reconfigurable like elements. Yeah, so we can uh, with this kind of uh, this race controller, we can adjust the propagation and the incident signals via phase and amplitude to achieve a smart radio like environment. Yeah. Actually, we have several advantages. For example, the easy, easy to uh, like the deploy and the low cost, the low energy consumption. Yeah. So this is risk. Yeah. But this is not to, not my today's like the focus. Yeah. So let's show what is my main research contribution. Yeah. So this is uh, from I call it uh, from the reflecting only rays to the stars. Yeah. So this is the like the reflect only risk. Yeah. So for example, this is a base station and this is the reflect this is the risk. If the user is located at the other side, right, so it cannot be served. Right? And which limits the flexibility. Yeah. And uh, if I use one slide to summarize my research contribution, it's like that. Yeah. So with the aid of star, we can ask the user which is located on the other side to be served as well yeah that's it <laughs> yeah so i can finish my talk today right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I, yeah now let's see how this is a basic concept which is quite clear and tidy right so let's see how we achieve this uh, like uh, concept right and you may also argue that so you know, even for some like uh, buildings windows they can still have some reflection or transmission right it is yeah, but we cannot make it uh, like the focus to, to some point. With eight of star, we can focus uh, this beam to this, uh, like to outdoor or to indoor users to do the outdoor sensing, indoor communication, or outdoor communication, indoor sensing, right? So this is the, so the comparing stars with the existing surfaces. Yeah. Now let's uh, move on, like the, a bit further. Let's see how we can use that, right? So I give you some like the uh, existing application scenarios for star, right? So this is the outdoor base station, right? So for example, the, in the future, we use the 6G base station, right? So it, it can operate in the millimeter wave, in the even higher like frequency, like the terahertz, right? So if we ask the outdoor base station to serve the indoor users with the mini, as a millimeter wave band, usually we cannot do that because it is very sensitive to the blockage, right? But if we put the star 
here on the window on the like we can ask the auto base station to serve the indoor users right or we can put the like space station here and we can use one base station to serve multiple rooms right so with the adux stuff yeah this is how we do that and the star can be made either the opaque or the transparent right if it's uh, uh, it's made by the transparent it's can, we can deploy it on the windows right it is if it is made by the like the opaque one, we can uh, put it on the like the ceilings on the walls, right? So connect all multiple rooms. So this is uh, how we use uh, like the stack. Right? And actually, this is uh, like the uh, prototype made by the Docomo, right? So this is uh, like the first version. I saw they have developed now the second version, right? Two point zero version. But this version, they they can do the three mode, tra pure transmission mode. Pure reflection mode and simultaneous transmission and reflection mode. Yeah, so this is quite uh, like interesting. Yeah. So I, actually, this is uh, also another uh, is one inspiration of why I work on this stuff. So now let's see how the stars can be implemented. Yeah. So we can generally like the device star in two like the categories. The first one we call it uh, like the patch array based. Yeah. And the second one we call it meta service based. Right. So the difference between the pattern based and the metal service based that it's from this direction it has a smaller element size and a more non-local effect. Yeah. So this is the difference. Yeah. And uh, for the pattern array based, so we can de generally divide it to this kind of pin diagonal power in power. Right. So actually, this is the most common, uh, like the scenes, uh, like star arrays we we so in our like the day line. And also, this is the, like the antenna in power. So this is more like we have the antenna here and uh, another antenna here. And the, for the, this surface, it is more like the, the, the star. Right? So this is it's more like the, the connect all door to indoor or connect all multiple rooms. And this is all. So and uh, so this is for the uh, Docomo smart glass. And the, the star mass, and this uh, star can even be uh, can even uh, made by this kind of like the gravity. Yeah. So this is. Uh, the case, yeah, and uh, so every uh, so material has its pros and cons, right? So with different like turning like the mechanisms, yeah, and also independent TNR control, right? So this is uh, we made some like the comparison in our like the VTM uh, uh, magazine paper to compare this uh, kind of thing. Yeah. Now let's see this uh, because we are like the so wireless uh, or signal processing researchers, right? So when we find some new like elements, new like material, new technology, so the first thing is that we do need to investigate the hardware model, right? And the channel model, right? So the hardware model, yeah, so currently there are three hardware models, the phase shift model, a load uh, independence model, and the GSTC model. This is uh, the, uh, the three like the most uh, common used uh, like the hardware model, right? So, and they have, also they have some pros and cons, yeah. So if we check the existing research contributions, maybe more than 90% they use this phase shift model, yeah. So this is because it is uh, compact and easy to use, yeah. But the disadvantage is that it sometimes is oversimplified, right. And for the load independence model, it is compact and accurate, but the problem is that it's not that general. And for the GSTC model, it is uh, general and accurate, but the problem is that it's a bit complicated. Yeah, so this is uh, some like the advantage and disadvantage. And also we need to consider the near field, like the, the channels right, and the far field channels. So actually in this paper, we, uh, when we propose, yeah, this paper, yeah, we can see this is paper. When we, we propose the star's name in this paper, we name star here, right? So in this paper, we already like realized that near field communication would be a like very good uh, direction for the star. Because uh, at that time, my understanding is still very like uh, limited, right? So I saw that near field communication just like a very short distance, right? So for example, from the base station to the, this window, it should be like the far field communication. And from this window to me, so or to us, it should be near field communications. Yeah, at that time, yeah. But uh, then for the, uh, I realized uh, after uh, I made some like the works, I realized that for near field communication, it can reach up to maybe 100 meters very easily. Right? So this is, uh, that's why. So uh, this near field communication it can be a very like a promising research direction for the star as well. Yeah. So now let's see the differences between the reflected only and uh, uh, like the rays or land like stars. Yeah. So if I just give you a like a very uh, basic example to see what's the difference between rays and the stars, for the rays we can regard it as a base case 
plate on the metal plates. Well, sorry, plate, yeah. And for the stars, we can regard it as ice cubes in a glass of water. Yeah, so it is uh, like the, uh, it's not 100% accurate, but just to give you a sense of what's the difference, right? So which means that for the stars, it is transparent at radio frequency. It's not necessary to be the transparent. It can be opaque, but it is transparent at radio frequency. Right? For the uh, like the for rays, actually, it's not. Uh, I mean, reflecting rays, only rays is cannot uh, uh, like the uh, uh, transparent to the like the radio frequency. Yeah. And also for the elements, for the like the ref reflecting only rays is only supports the electronic uh, electric currents, and for the stars, it su supports both the electronic and the equivalent magnetic, uh, like the uh, magnetic currents, yeah. So you may argue that so there is no magnetic currents, right? but actually here it means that it's a vortex, vortex or cir circularized like the currents. Yeah, this is the case. Now let's uh, move a bit further, right? To see this is, uh, now we need to move the signal model, right? Now we got the hardware model, channel model, now let's move to signal model. So this is transmit signal. This is uh, this, this is the incident signal. This is transmitted signal. This is uh, like the reflected signal. Yeah. So the difference between the star and rays is that so so the star the, we need to obey the law of the energy conservation, right? Because we have we do need to do some like the power splitting between transmission and uh, reflection. Right? So this is the case. So and now we move like the to the communication design how we. Do this kind of communication design, right? So we see for the star elements, uh, actually this is uh, like the phase shift and reflection. They can be chosen like independently from each other. But for the each star like elements, the implement control so uh, for transmission and reflection are coupled by the law of energy conservation. Yeah, this is uh, the thing I mentioned. Right? Now let's uh, see. Yeah, and you may see that you I mean, you talk a lot for this uh, different models for the stars, but What's the benefits? What's the so if we well if you encourage us to work on some new technology, it must have some like the benefits, right? So now I give you some of the performance gains of stars, right? So if we use the conventional rays, right? So as a, a benchmark, yeah. Here the conventional rays, I mean, we do need to make the fair comparison. Right, not reflect. We put here the our benchmark schemes is that one transmit only rays and one reflecting rays. It's two parts, right? Not just the uh, uh, reflection, right? And then we put this one for the stars for uh, for the conventional rays. We put each of the which has m elements, and for stars we have a uh, two m elements, right? So if we compare the, the diversity orders, we can see this is star, this is rays. Right, so we can achieve the double diversity orders. And for the power scaling law, right? So we can see this is for the conventional star is m over two square. But for the like uh, uh, for the rays, sorry, for the star is m square for both sides. So this is the advantage. So now and then if we go for the similar results, we can see this part is star and this part is rays. We can see directly see the benefits. Yeah. And now, now we go, okay, we, we are confident we have the gain. Right. So because for the words the researchers, we do like the power scale low, diversity order, and for this multiplexing game. For for the past several decades, we are like the fancy investigating this kind of thing. Now we show that we have demonstrated the game. Now we are confident we can work on that. Right. Now let's see the analysis. It's like the, the, the bound. Right. So we we want to see what is the like the upper bound. Right. We know that the Norma is a capacity achieving scheme for the like the conventional uh, like wireless communication system. Yeah. How about in star? Right? First, we try to investigate this uh, this bound. Right. So now we do this kind of the so called the coverage like the characterization for the stars. Right. So we investigate both the norma and the oma case. Right. So here, this is the reflection region, and this is the, like the transmission region. Right. Here, we fix the like the rate. And allow the users to roll. Then we got this kind of coverage region, right? If we fix the location of the user and allow this kind of rate to be uh, to be changed, we can get the rate region, right? So this, this is similar, right? So we just change another direction to do that, right? And then we also show this kind of uh, this game from the normal, so from the uh, star 
uh, game for normal and the normal game for star, right? And also they are comparison with the normal like some conventional schemes and uh, the conventional rates. So we demonstrate the stars improve the normal game over the like the OMA, the sorry, uh, over the OMA than the conventional rates, right? And then the star plus normal is a win win solution, right? So I will demonstrate why this is a win win solution later. So now let's see the protocol design. Yeah. So now we, we see, we know what is that and why do we need that? We see how we can implement this, right? But we do need to uh, demonstrate the protocol, right? So we still start with a very simple case, right? So with this, like the one base station and two users, there's no direct link, yeah? just uh, the reflection and transmission link. Yeah? We try to demonstrate how to do this uh, beamforming, right? So now we give three protocols, right? So for each element, each element, so for example, this is element, element, element. T means the transmission. R means the reflection, right? So T and R means the simultaneous transmission and reflection, right? So the first protocol we propose is called energy splitting. It means that every element, it can operate simultaneously transmission and uh, re uh, reflection mode, right? Uh, it is quite flexible. And the second one we call it the mode switching. Mode switching means that it can either work on the transmission mode or reflection mode, right? So this is more like the binary. Or in other case, or in other words, this is the special case and uh, of the energy splitting, right? Because here it's more like the, it's, it's a continuous case, and this is uh, like the binary case, right? either zero or one. And for time switching, it means that it can either in this time slot it works in the like the uh, reflection mode. In the next time slot, it works uh, for the like the transmission like the uh, mode, right? It's more like our blind. Turn, turn it on to make it on the uh, transmission mode. Turn it off to uh, make it on the reflection mode. So this is the, how we take these protocols. Yeah, of course, each protocol, they have their own pros and cons. Yeah, for example, for the uh, uh, energy splitting, it has the highest uh, flexibility, right? Because every element we can operate. But uh, the problem is that we do need the large number of variables to be optimized. And for the most switching, it is easy to implement, yeah, but uh, it reduced the, or it sacrificed the transmission and reflection gains. And for the time switching, we have the good thing is that we have independent T and R design. There's no interference. Uh, but the problem is that uh, it requires high hardware implementation complexity to implement that. Yeah, so this is the case. So, and uh, Actually, so we discussed both for the unicast and the multicast case, and for each protocol, so we demonstrate that, okay, so we, we, they have their preferred scenario. For example, the TS is preferred for the unicast, and the ES is preferred for the multicast. Right? And also, for the, the, we also obtained some like the, uh, interesting remarks for, the, for all schemes. Right? So now let's uh, talk a bit uh, for the, now we got still talking about the basis. We talk a bit uh, for the varieties of stars. We'll start with uh, this, this couple. Yeah. So you can see this is my research style. Usually from the independent case to the coupled case. Yeah. You may argue that, okay, maybe, so in reality, so nothing is independent and nothing is ideal, right? But uh, we do still need to pre, uh, uh, like, uh, investigate this, uh, uh, this independent case because it is more clear and tidy, right? So too easy to pre, uh, provide the insights, right? Now we go for the couple of cases, right? So for this kind of, we start with the Pisces lossless stars, right? To do this kind of uh, couple of cases, right? So when I, uh, I shared my uh, like the research story with like the uh, I knew yesterday. So when I started to work on star, I my initial feeling is that it's just like in uh, like the extension of race, it it's not a lot of work. But when I get in touch with it, I thought, oh no, it's not that like that. I do need to reinvestigate the boundary conditions of the Maxwell equations and the energy con like conservation model, and also for this kind of hardware model, like the channel model, signal model, it's uh, totally different. So that's why I developed this kind of like the correlated model, right? So we got this kind of correlation, right? So we refer some like nature and science paper to get this kind of and the physical review to get this kind of uh, like the correlation, uh, like the equation model, right? And then we still we propose several protocols. The first one we call it primary and secondary. Primary and secondary means that okay, we put the trans either transmission or 
the like the reflection as the primary one. And then for the other side, we only have one bit space to adjust. This is called the, the primary and the secondary. Right? A second one, we call it the diversity preserving. Right? From them, we know that the purpose of this protocol is to preserve the diversity. Right? The second one is called TNR group, which means that we, for each element, it can only work on the T mode or R mode. Right? It's more similar to the, like, the most switching I mentioned. Right? And the benchmark scheme is a random one. Right? So this is our like, the, the, the case. Actually, we demonstrate the fundamental performance limits, for example, from the diversity order, from the power scale law, to demonstrate the different protocols. They have different like, advantage. They have different like, the insights. Yeah, this is the case. Yeah. So now let's uh, move a bit further. Right? So previously, we discussed the protocol for the independent uh, like, uh, star. Now, how about the coupled one? How about the coupled one? Right? So now, we still show this case, but here, this is the coupled uh, star, not independent anymore, right? So we got this uh, coupled phase shift uh, like the constraints here. It is quite challenging, right? So how to solve this, uh, this problem? Right? So actually, we propose an element-wise alternating optimization algorithm right, to solve this problem, right? And then this, the good thing, this is uh, like the uh, flow of the algorithm. The good thing is that the complexity of this thing is quite low. It's like the linear with this kind of number of the stars. Yeah. But the problem is that it is cannot obtain the optimal solution. Uh, so this is the case. Right. So this algorithm is okay, but not good enough. Right. So when I developed uh, th this thing, so I'm not quite uh, uh, happy with this kind of algorithm. That's why I attack myself again, right? So you can regard, uh, you can see my style, right? I always uh, t attack myself, right? So, and I, I try to improve, right? So uh, although the complexity of this, uh, the, this one is, is okay, but it has the following problem. First, it has limited application scenarios, right? Just a single attender to communicate user. And also there is no optimality to be guaranteed, right? So, and also, why develop this uh, couple of star like uh, scenario? A lot of like uh, uh, researchers uh, they send me email to see that oh you have a, this, uh, this concept is interesting and it is uh, it's good the couple of star case, but it is too complicated for us to start with, right? Because the entry bar is a bit higher because uh, yeah. So that's why I want to develop an uh, optimization frame, uh, framework is applicable to the various scenarios. It can be the normal, it can be the SWIFT, it can be the SX, it can be the physical security, it can be the UAV, right? And have the provable optimality. This is my, like, the, the purpose to go further. Right? So then I propose this general optimization framework, right? So this is, uh, like, the a sin application scenario independent like the uh, uh, framework, right? You do not need to care about what kind of scenarios. As long as you can follow these conditions, this objective function, these conditions, you can use this optimization framework. You can regard it as a two box, like a CVX, right? So we can, and also we put our like the code on the, on the like GitHub. You can just download and play with it, right? So the, as long as you follow this one, you can use our like the framework. And also the remarks is that, so this is, uh, we, with this uh, like the so toolbox, we can upgrade your algorithm from the independent to the couple, right? For example, previously, if you propose algorithm can work on the independent scenario, right? Algorithm A. And if you use algorithm B plus our proposed framework, you make it as a couple. Yeah, so, yeah, so this is a more like the upgraded, uh, like, the, uh, like the version. And also it has low complexity, right? And uh, because amplitudes and the phase shift are updated in a closed world, right? And uh, also it can guarantee the, uh, like the coverage and the optimality. Yeah, so this is uh, the, the case. And uh, at least, uh, so we got some like good uh, like the re uh, remarks for this one. So next uh, stage, I will talk about a bit for this AI for the star. Yeah. For myself, I'm uh, so I'm also worked a lot for the AI for the machine learning. Yeah. But uh, when I 
but I, I never like to encourage to say that AI for everything. Uh, so it's not that case. Uh, so when I work on this AI, I will ask my like the, my co-authors, colleagues, and students, why do we need this AI? Right. So this is uh, if this problem can be solved by the conventional convex optimization problem, why do we need this AI? Yeah. Yeah. If the answer is yes, why do we need this AI? Uh, if not, right, so we can consider something like this. Uh, so in my opinion, right, it's just my personal opinion. Right? So the motivation of AI is that we want to lower the complexity. This is the first thing we can do. Right? So and for example, this case is that the coupled bit shift, they have the, they lead to hybrid actions, which is a bit like the difficult for the convex optimization to solve. Right? And the second motivation is that we need this kind of long-term time varying problem. Uh, in that case, we can get a very good the Markov decision, like the process problem. Yeah, a good example is like the UAV, right? Uh, like the trajectory design. So, for example, if you from A to fly to the C, you must pass B, right? Which means that the location B is uh, dependent on A, and the location of C is de dependent on B, right? So this is uh, the, the we got the perfect. Um, like the Markov decision. Yeah, similar for this uh, star. We, we need to formulate this kind of the so-called this uh, time varying, this uh, long-term time varying problem. There is a T here, uh, the time. Uh, and uh, also we got this kind of, uh, uh, so like the kind of high, uh, high action dimension. Yeah. So you may argue that, so so, you may, so the, the machine learning is not low complexity, right? So it requires a lot of money to do this kind of training process, right? So we, uh, it's not easy, right? But they are all in the server side, right? For example, when we are using the ChatGPT, yeah, so you ask some question, did you feel some delay, right? Actually, so the testing process is quite uh, like uh, uh, simple as uh, clear and tidy, right? But for the convex optimization, you do need to run your algorithm like time by time, right? So this is some, this is from this point, the machine learning can achieve some low complexity design. Yeah, so this is my opinion. Yeah. So now if we compare the conventional optimization versus like the AI based method, we can see, right? So actually, we, this is a tool, uh, we, we just uh, take our proposed framework and the, the, like the, this machine learning framework I, as a, like a the comparison. There is a trade-off in choosing method in the one and the two, right? So the one is like the optimization, two is, uh, uh, is like the machine learning, right? So for the conventional optimization method, it can guarantee the optimality of the solution, but it needs many iterations to achieve that. But for the AI-based method, right, it can obtain a solution in just in the milliseconds, but cannot guarantee the optimality of the solutions. Right? So this is the case. So everything is about the complexity and optimality. Yeah. Then you may ask me, so you, you, you mentioned so many models, right? So like the hardware models, channel models, single models, coupled one, independent one. So the machine learning and the, the, this the convex optimization. So which model is better? So I borrow this lovely George's sentence, right? So essentially all models are wrong, right? But some are useful. So everything is playing with the complexity and between the complexity and the, the like the performance. So now let's uh, move a bit further to this kind of uh, for, uh, so the dual sided cases. Yeah. So actually this is uh, something interesting. Right? So when we start with the star, we investigate the downlink case, right? So downlink case is that just like, the, it's not dual side, it's just a single side and a split, right? But for the uplink case, actually, so it's uh, it's dual side, right? Because uh, from one side your reflection to the other side is the transmission, yeah, and the vice versa, right? So in that case, uh, we do need to reinvestigate the model, right? So we cannot reuse the down uh, downlink model, right? So that's why we call it uh, one signal incident on both sides, right? So this is uh, and this is. Uh, uh, so we, we indicate that uh, so the dual sided starts has like uh, symmetrical EM responses on both sides, right? So this is uh, the, the case we need to be careful. Yeah. 
And then we can demonstrate that this is our like uh, got the similar results. We can see that signals of the users are directed to the base station, and also we get some like uh, this kind of uh, error flow. Right? So this is for the uh, uplink case. So why? Uh, you may ask me, yeah, we do, why do we want to investigate this dual-sided uplink case, right? Another important reason is for the channel estimation. Right? For every technique, we have to do the channel estimation. Right, my memo, millimeter wave, and also for every new technique, you do this. This is fundamental research for this kind of virus communication. Right? But when you do this channel estimation for stars, your channel estimation is more like the uplink case. Right, you do need to take care of this kind of uh, protocol, uplink case. Right, so we just uh, take this uh, analyst rating and uh, time switching as an example, because most switching can be regarded as a special case of analyst rating. Right, so for the time switching. We can see, and then we can see this is uplink case. So for uplink case, so some energy, there is the problem called energy leakage. Uh, means that if this is a transmitter, this is a user, and the energy from the other side will be leaked. Uh, so this is uh, why we, this is the problem of the uplink. Uh, so by doing so, we demonstrate that, we compare it. Okay, this is TF, this is uh, uh, like the, uh, uh, yes, right. We demonstrate that uh, the PS protocol achieves a smaller channel SVN error, right? And the ES leads a power leakage during the uplink transmission, which means the TS is better, right, for uplink, right? Because for TS, we do not have this problem, right? So we just, if we go to the, uh, like the transmission, uh, reflection mode, we just uh, turn off this part. If we go to transmission mode, just turn off this part. So there is no power leakage. So this is, means that the uplink case, uh, TS is the best protocol to achieve. Now we go for our like the star like the platform to see to see my vision. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Now we got like fundamental like the issues for this kind of star and almost solved. Right. So we got so what is the, so what is the next story? Right. What should we do next? Right. So still far from like the happy ending. So now this is star basically got signal model operating protocols, beamform design, CSS estimation, right? So now that's why we try to make this star platform for the 6G and even beyond, right? So we try to upgrade the existing stars with a few like the functions. We'll support 6G requirements. We want to open for some innovation, right? We want to make a big kick, right? So we can do what we do is that we can do the sensing as star, amplifying as star, and the caching as star. Right. Even for in the future, we do this computing as star and other functions as star, right. localization as star, right. this kind of thing. Yeah. So we start, I just give you an like, so example for this kind of sensing star. So why I, so we can see this is the base station, this is the sensing space, and this is the communication space, right? So we propose the so-called sensing as star technique. So what's the advantage? We put the sensors on the star rather than on the base station. Uh, so the advantage is that if you do the sensing as a base station, we do need to do this multiple high hops from the base station to the star to the target and to the star to the base station. Right? So this is multiple hops. But so for the sensing as star, we just need one hop. That's it. Right? So this is clear and tidy. Right? And also, uh, we, like, so for the star, so naturally we have two spaces. Transmission space and uh, like the reflection space. So we can also put this as a sensing space and communication space. By doing so, we can avoid this kind of echo that sometimes it will be confused so from the transmission side or from the reflection side. But with this design, we have never this confusion. Right? So we can do all those sensing indoor communication or indoor communication all those sensing. Right? So this is the case we can like, like the, achieve. So this is a figure we demonstrate our like the stars with uh, ISAC, right? We can see this is uh, the smaller the dot is means that it's more accurate, right? So this is uh, like the stars, and then this is random. We can just localize. Okay, this is just uh, in this circle, but uh, we cannot know where exactly it is. Yeah, but here it's very accurate. Yeah. So now we talk about a bit for this amplifying and star amplifying, right? So similarly. For if we do some, we put this uh, like the active star, we do need to put something like the amplifiers to achieve the higher gain, 
Uh, sometimes, for example, it's in the window, uh, sometimes we want to, to make it as uh, amplifier, so um, similar to the relay, right? We want to do that. So, yeah, we still need to redefine or redesign this kind of uh, so the hardware model, right? So we, we will, yeah, so we still need to replay with the uh, Maxwell equations, right? So, so, but if you are interested in the details, it's here, right? So how to do this kind of hardware design, right? And also we can get some like the good, like the, uh, diversity order, uh, like the, uh, uh, gain and also power scaling gain. Yeah, so this is the case. Now I'm talking a bit for this, uh, caching and stuff. Yeah. So for example, we can do this caching here. Uh, so we uh, sometimes we just uh, do this caching here, and then we go this we install the cache memory and the smart controller as the uh, stars, right? So we can satisfy the users' demands and in the few fewer hops and the desired channel conditions. Uh, and also we can join to as the like the optimization, the caching placement, uh, replacement, and the information centric hybrid informing. Yeah, this is our the, the case. Yeah, we can. Uh, design this kind of uh, either the single mode or hybrid mode. Yeah, this is some like the similar results of our like, the caching and stuff. So now we talk about the case study of the star. Right? So we talk about the start with, with uh, Noma. Yeah, per perhaps you know that I'm the Noma guy right? previously. <laughs> yeah, like so, several years ago. Yeah, and then, uh, but when I get in touch to the risk. As the first time, so I realized, oh, this is very fantastic for Norma because for Norma, what do we care? We want the channels uh, to be uh, different, uh, like the uh, enough, right? In that case, we can have the uh, higher like the performance gain, right? If the channels are similar, so we cannot get the gain, and the risk can help us to enlarge this uh, this channel gain. Right? So that's why I said Norma is uh, risk is a Norma woman solution, but but risk is not. Uh, like the good enough, right? For the star, right? So we can make this channel more different, more distinct, which is other. For example, the users in this room, we can work with the users and the other room, right? So we can use the, ask the uh, reflection user one to group with the transmission user two to make the first normal pair. And the transmission user, reflection user two with the uh, transmission user A to make the second user pair. Uh, by doing so, we can get the uh, like a symmetric channel conditions and get more ref uh, flexible resource allocation and higher performance gain. So this is uh, our case, right? So that's why I see that this is uh, we have the like the higher uh, like the channel gain and the performance gain. Yeah, this is a win-win solution for star and normal. Yeah, so this is our like the design for the joint. Yeah, we try to draw and to optimize this kind of active beamforming power location and the decoding order and this uh, this kind of thing. And we can see that this is our proposed. Uh, we our benchmark is OMA and also and the conventional race. We can demonstrate our advantage. And this is the power location between the transmission and uh, the reflection. Yeah, for this table. <laughs> So now, still, the second case study would be this kind of stuff for the terahertz. Yeah. So this is a terahertz. For example, even this for the terahertz or maybe millimeter wave, we can use these stars to connect the multiple dots. Right. So uh, so if we compare to the risk, right. So for example, so if this is a base station, this is the user. Right. If you want to serve this one, you need to go to multiple hops to get this one. But with the star, you can go to one hop. Right. So this is an advantage we can do. Yeah. In the future, compared to the Conventional rates, right? So we can, in in short, stars is more flexible than rates to address this kind of thing because it is have provides the higher degree of freedom. Right? So I also, but we still need to reinvestigate this kind of power consumption models for stars. We do need to consider this kind of numbers of IP and diagonals on the power consumption for this kind of thing, and also we need to consider this kind of wide band effect. Right. For the wide band effect, but in the wide band we have something called like the uh, beam split effect. So here we propose to use the TTD, which is called a true time delay, to reschedule this one to solve this problem. Right. So actually, because this time delay is usually is uh, frequency dependent. Right. But usually your like the uh, analog viewformer is uh, uh, is independent is uh, like the uh, frequency independent. 
So they have this mismatch. Uh, so this is uh, called the so-called beam split. And with the aid of the, like the TDD, we can solve this problem. Uh, theoretically speaking, no need for the phase shift anymore if we use the TDD. Uh, but the problem with that TDD now currently is more like the power like the cons uh, consuming and not more like the expensive than this kind of uh, phase shift. Yeah, so this is, uh, we can see this is conventional like the uh, beam speed, and with the TD, we can get the very good performance. So now we still get some like a spatial analysis for the stochastic geometry. Yeah, so actually my PhD is so based on stochastic geometry. Yeah, at that time, 2013 is still like the hot topic, right? So actually, stochastic geometry is a powerful tool to capture the spatial randomness of the various uh, networks, right? And for example, if in the KTH in the future we can we want to deploy some stars, right? So how many stars do we need? In what density between the base station and uh, and the stars? In what density between the base station and the users? So and uh, where to deploy? Actually, this problem can be solved by the stochastic geometry. Right? So stochastic geometry can be used to, to analyze the average performance of the various networks. Right? So this is the case. Right? So uh, still, I go start the like the single cell, and the, to the multi cell, right? So this is my research style. Yeah. So it's just like we want to. I just always take this example to my uh, colleagues. Right? So usually we want to do this kind of. Uh, uh, sorry. So usually we we like to play in games. Right? Why is that? Because every we we entry one level we got some reward. Right? Similar. So we start with a single cell to the multiple cell, single tenor to multiple cell. Uh, multiple tenor, and then people can understand your research, uh, so very easily. So it is uh, then they can easy to follow. Uh, so now we go to another thing is called this kind of uh, uh, integrating the normal and error factor learning. Yeah. So this is cool stuff. So actually, if you compare the uh, normal and the factor learning, you can see this is quite similar. Uh, they are all like the uplink and uh, all like the working on the same frequency and uh, uh, like the time slot. Yeah. The only difference is that the uh, I mean the at the receiver. But of course, uh, precoding they have some difference, but the main difference is the receiver part. Right? For the normal, we need the every single message of the users, but for the federal learning, we, we just need the gradient. Right? So, and in that case, they can coexist. For example, some users can be normal users, some users can be the federal learning users, and they can switch. So, and for example, I, at this time slot, I'm the normal user. At that step, I want to move, uh, I want to change to a like the federal, federal learning user, right? So who can help me, right? The star can help me to change my condition and channel condition and requirements, right? So this is the basic idea. Yeah. And then the, I talk, last I will talk about the prototype standardization and the commercializing. Yeah, so this is some like the prototype design we have developed with our like attendant colleagues in Kumari. Yeah, actually this is a single element. This, uh, this is uh, the, the star, yeah. Uh, you can see this is still not in that advanced, but because not currently we still have limited energy and the funding, yeah. So we can only make this uh, like a simple element, just like the TNS, the, the, the simple one. So, but for the simple, like the, the single element, we can already achieve the simultaneous transmitting and refactoring design, yeah. But in the future, we plan to make the like a full a panel, like the array, yeah. And for me, actually, yeah, actually, I'm uh, very active on the standardization activity of STAR. Right? Now, currently, we have uh, successfully pushed the STAR in this kind of uh, like IC, like standardization. Currently, I'm the rubber two of this uh, this uh, multifunctional race. Yeah, and we have uh, a lot of like the current members, right? So, and uh, we, we we try to push this direction like uh, together, right? And this is the commercial progress of STAR. This is uh, I mentioned before the Docomo. And this one is uh, Alec and AGC. So this is a commercial product. You can buy this in the, their website. So this uh, Alec is uh, like the, uh, like the Germany, like the uh, at the smart antenna company. This AGC is the Japanese uh, like the material company. So they collaborate. We can see this is the more like the, uh, you can regard our normal window. This part you can regard it as uh, the star. But uh, there's not really a star. They only have one function to connect or to ask the outdoor minimum base station to serve the indoor user through this one. Yeah, this is their like the, this is the commercial one. And this is the, like the, like the Coursera. 
So they made this kind of prototype. This is uh, like the uh, opaque one, and this is like the transparent one. So, and also, yeah, there are some like research opportunities. And uh, so for the stars, so still we got, say, for example, hardware implementation, channel measurements, and uh, uh, deployment, uh, so, like the near field communication, computing, and stuff. We still have a lot of like the research spaces on the star. Yeah. So, so my hope is to make those stars to shine in the 6G star to uh, uh, achieve the sustainable, ubiquitous, and uh, green communications. I hope I can make this go with all of you. Thank you. This is all my... At the last, I would like to acknowledge all my team members, yeah, because uh, this is not this is just not just my own work. It's a teamwork. Without them, I cannot make this. Yeah. So every time I acknowledge my team members. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat>